All right, guys. So hold on. Let me just get rid of this banner here um, so you guys don't have to see that. Okay. Uh, first question. Let's take a look here. Um, yeah. Sorry, guys. I don't know what happened there. All right. Sophie. So Sophie, can you monetize rain relax videos with stock pictures? So this has been the big question, obviously. And when I made that video, it was over a year ago. So things have changed quite a bit since then. Um, Andrew, what's up, man? So I did I did uh, post a video the other day about kind of the updates and, and what's happened since then. Whenever you're using stock videos, um, and I was just researching this last night because I want to do some stuff and, and I want to add some, uh, some movie clips or things like that. Um, there, there are uh, lots of rules and regulations, right? There's obviously copyrighted and commercial, non-commercial. Pexels and a lot of these free places um, now you have to check the license agreement within the video or the image and the sound for that matter, because every artist now is adding really their own, you know, their own um, rules and regulations to it. So if I'm an artist um, and I want to put my stuff for free on Pexels, right? Maybe I made a video, right? I shot a video like a really funky sunset or whatever, and I license it to Pexels to use for free because I want to get my name out there. So there's two things that could happen. One, I could, one, what's up, Red? One, I could say, hey, this is this is free to use, commercial, non-commercial, whatever you want. However, you must use my name. You have to say Judd Olbring made this video, blah, blah, blah. Or I might say you can do whatever you want, my name or not name. However, you can't profit from it, which is you can't use it for commercial use like something on YouTube. So you just need to look at the rules and the regulations. Um, and you also have to make sure that everything you do is 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 unique, right? Is um, so back to what I was saying about using like news reels, movie clips. There's a lot of people that do movie channels, movie review channels on YouTube, and um, you there's a certain way that you have to cut up the clips to make it your own, right? To make it original. You just can't take a full 20 minutes of say the Godfather and put it up. And then when it's done, say, here's my review on the Godfather. But you could take maybe like a two, three second clip of say De Niro saying something, and then you throw in your commentary, that sort of thing. So you're making it original, you're making it unique, you're making it yours. Now also lots of videos or movies, things like that, they have, they already have fair use stuff in place because they want to get the word out and things like that. So you just need to you need to know the laws. The end of the, the end uh, at the end of the day, I know just as much as you do, really, when it comes to that. I could say, yeah, you could do it, but you got to read the fine print. Okay. Um, does that answer your question? I know you're probably looking for a yes and a no, but unfortunately, I can't tell you that. And YouTube's getting smarter, right? So a lot of the rain videos, meditation videos that people are making a crap ton of money on, a lot of them are not monetized. However, you, there's nothing saying you can't make a rain video. You just, you're not gonna be able to monetize with YouTube on some of them, okay? And But also you shouldn't look at AdSense and YouTube being your main source of income. If YouTube is not my main source of income, right? As far as AdSense, right? People think like, oh, you're making all this money and that's that's not the case. I do this because one, I love it, but two, I educate and I like to help people and do things like that. Um, but then it helps me grow my brand, right? Whatever my brand, I <laughs> still don't know my brand is, I guess it's just my name. But, um, you know, I do affiliate marketing. I've been doing it for six years. So I always, in my videos, I always recommend affiliate marketing. I say, hey guys, if you want to learn about affiliate marketing, there's a link below. And if people want to click on it, they click on it. If they don't, that's fine. But it takes them to a training where they can learn about affiliate marketing, things like that. You can do this as well with any, um, you can do this with any product out there right? You could, you know, with the rain videos and the meditation, you could link to meditation related product products. You could, you could link to uh, Amazon. You could be an affiliate for Amazon. It's free to do. It's, you can sign up today, go to Amazon associates and you could link to like, you know, lavender oils, things like that. I mean, anything, it's not hard. You just might have to have something in your video say, Hey, you know, link below for X, Y, and Z. Okay. Frankie Lou. Yeah, so what I was just saying, Frankie, so part of my income comes from YouTube, but majority of my income comes from affiliate marketing. But that's what I've been doing for six years. So it takes a long time 
not all, it depends on who you are, what you do, but I've been doing affiliate marketing for some time now. And then I've really started to work more on my YouTube channel the past few months. Um, COVID and everything, things kind of were slow. But like I was saying, you know, you have to be consistent and you have to put out stuff every day. Um, what's AD, Sophie? Yeah, I mean, you know, again, you can with the with rain videos or anything like that. Okay, good, Sophie. Yeah, I know. I I feel bad because it's like, okay, I'm just repeating myself, repeating myself. But you you just have to be smart. You know, you have to um, read the rules, read the regulations. I mean, you know, I could I could make a whole five hour video on rules and regulations and things like that. But in the end, you just got to do your research. You know, and be smart. Um, you know, YouTube's one of those things like, you know, I do a lot of videos on, on how to make money online, how to make money with YouTube and, and all these videos and everything I teach, um, no, uh, affirmations. I'll answer that in a second. Um, so Sophie, so, um, what was I going to say? Um, so yeah, I mean, Everything that I do, and I'm really starting to change my content more and really get away. You know, when I first started, it was a lot of like how to make money on PayPal, how to make money with Amazon, how to do this, how to do that. And I'm really focusing on just YouTube, online, affiliate marketing, things like that, and showing people that it is possible. Is it guaranteed? Absolutely not. But you have to put in the work, right? You have to, everybody wants a quick fix. There is no overnight success. Can you make $3,000 a day? Sure. People do it all the time but it takes time to get there and you have to be consistent. You have to do the work. Nobody wants to work anymore, right? You got to put in the work. Um, so is all your affiliate marketing done through YouTube? No, I have an email list of thousands and thousands of people um, that I've collected over the years. So that's really where a lot of it comes from. Um, is it possible to loop an iMovie? Uh, Matthew, so Matthew, is it possible to loop on, let me see if I can pop this. Okay. Um, it's possible to loop on iMovie like screencast or whatever it's called. Um, yeah. I mean, it's the same thing. You're just, you're just, so if you had like a five minute piece of rain, you would just copy that clip, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. That's it. You're just taking section, copy, paste, section, and so on and so on and making it longer. The, the only difficult part is, um, you know, your computer and your internet speed, when you export it, it's such a big file. And a lot of people are coming back to me saying, hey, it's taken forever. It's like, well, yeah, I mean, I can't, there's only so much I can do about that. You, you know, you have to, a lot of people that do these videos, you know, they're not putting out one a day, right? Um, they might do one and then it might take several hours to export it. So I've done stuff where I export it and I just do it before I go to bed. I hit export and I go to bed. And when I wake up, it's done. Um, but I don't do a lot of those. So, yeah, I hope that helps. Um, yeah, I mean, iMovie, you know, a lot of people are just fine with iMovie. You got to just think about what you're doing, what, what you know, like I do a lot of screen, screen sharing stuff. So I need a tool like ScreenFlow. Um, after a while, I couldn't do the stuff I want to do in iMovie. So if you go, if you look at this as a business and you treat it as a business, there are expenses involved, right? Everybody wants everything for free and quick and overnight, and that doesn't work. If you want to make it long-term on YouTube, eventually you're going to have to invest something. Either it's your editing software, your camera, your audio. I mean, over as things go, you're, there's some things you're going to have to do. Okay, good, Matthew. All right. Anybody else with questions? Frankie Lou, what is your biggest source of income? I think we talked about that. Um, did you, Matthew asked, did you used to have a nine to five? Yes. Yes. I see your pickup truck. Is that your pickup truck? Or just a picture of a pickup truck? Um, yeah, I did. Uh, you know, I worked in, in retail. So if you see some of my older videos, so I worked in, sales and retail for 20 plus years. Um, 
and then yeah, I, and then uh, I got laid off, and and I was starting a family. I got started a little late, as you could tell by my age. But so I got started a little late with the family thing, and and I became a stay at home dad because it was just cheaper for me to stay home than try and get pay for someone to watch our kids. And we both had to work. Um, but after being a stay at home dad, my 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 wife's like, okay, we need we need some extra money, and we were trying to figure out how I could still be a parent, stay home take care of the kids and then still make some money on the side. So I tried like, I drove for Uber at night. I did all that kind of stuff. Um, I started a little cleaning business. You know, I was cleaning windows like storefronts uh, and I did houses and things like that because I could do that on the weekends. And then I take, I take care of the kids during the weekdays. And then I started to learn about affiliate marketing and started to learn about YouTube, all that kind of stuff. And I just, started like you guys are. I just started watching videos and and I just started. And and at first it really sucked and it still sucks. I mean, I did this, I'm doing this live stream right now and people are like, where are you? You're not on here. And I'm like, oh crap, I didn't press the button. Right. So it's, but who cares? You know, I'm learning. So you just got to start. But the great thing about YouTube is starting a YouTube channel is you can do it. You know, you can start with your phone. Of course you can get a cheap microphone for 50 bucks or less on YouTube, on Amazon, and you just start putting out content, right? Just do your research, of course, make sure it's content people want to watch. Use that tool vidIQ, which I recommend to you guys, which is free, or you could do the basic package, which is 10 bucks a month. And even 10 bucks a month is nothing, guys. It'll save you tons of time. Sophie, I totally understand nothing comes easy. I'm just not comfortable showing my face. Okay, this is good actually. And that was the reason I asked, can you monetize videos? Yeah, yeah, okay, so great question, Sophie. So Sophie's saying, you know, can you monetize videos without being on camera, right? Um, that's a great question, absolutely. I mean, there's, I know, I don't know them personally, but there's tons of channels that I know out there that you never see their face, right? One, you know, um, one channel I really like is called Dream Cloud. Uh, he's a YouTuber and he talks all about YouTubes and views. He's never once showed his face. And I want to say he's close to 100,000 subscribers in less than maybe a couple of year, two years, something like that. I don't know. But it's all about, you know, what are you, what are you doing? What are you providing? Um, um, and what's the content, you know, what's the content? Is it content that can be monetized? Um, voiceovers? Yes, absolutely. Um, just make sure, Sophie, if that is what you're doing, have a have good audio, right? Um, can't stress that enough. Um, but yeah, you can absolutely monetize YouTube videos without camera. One thing I, I've one thing that you have to understand with monetizing your thing, everybody wants to get monetized, right? Monetize, 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 and that's big. But also, what if your channel all of a sudden does is demonetized, right? Now what? Are you just going to stop YouTube? If my ch if all of a sudden YouTube told me tomorrow, hey man, we're not going to give you AdSense anymore, right? And I make from my AdSense, about 10 to 11 bucks for every thousand views. And that's because I'm in a niche that's, the average is two to three. So depending on the niche you're in, right, people obviously want to spend more money on work from home, make money online type videos, as opposed to if I had a channel where I talked about gardening, right, which is very popular and a very good niche. But most of those people, they're not relying on AdSense. They're relying on the affiliate marketing that they're getting right? Which is the links they put in their video. Hey, buy these gardening tools, take this gardening class, things like that. So if you're thinking you're going to make money on AdSense alone, don't, that's, this is not right for you. Uh, Red, great question. So Red's asking, does he have to contact YouTube about monetization? Or will they contact me? So basically with, with YouTube, it's 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours. Um, yeah, Sophie, good. So so once you get 1,000 subscribers, 4,000, then you have to basically apply. You go, to, you go to your YouTube studio and you'll see a tab that says monetization red. And that's where you'll apply for monetization. Now, um, I think when I did mine, there was like, I think it just turned on. It may be different now. Don't quote me on that. It's been a long time. I've been monetized for several years. So, but as long as you have a thousand and then four thousand, I believe you can apply. This does not guarantee monetization, though. Like I was just saying to Sophie, I would have a backup plan. Um, and that's another thing. This is a great question, actually, Red, because this is another thing, guys. 
when you're choosing your niche for YouTube, right, and you're choosing, you know, what you what you want to do your channel, you're all excited about it. You got to make sure that it's a profitable niche, right? You got to make sure that people actually want what you're going to do. Um, if if your goal is to to obviously make some income from it, right? Some people that's they're just doing it to do it. Maybe you're growing a, a, a brick and mortar business, right? That's totally fine. Um, but you also got to make sure people are are searching for that type of content. Otherwise, nobody's going to find you. Okay, so so if you're looking to grow a brand, maybe offsite, maybe a restaurant, which a lot of people do, um, which is awesome. Um, but so they maybe they're not making money from YouTube, but people are going to their their place or whatever it is. So they know that their money their money's coming. This is just a free way for them to advertise. Does that make sense? Um, but I always like to have a backup plan. That's why I have my affiliate marketing things like that that I can do. God forbid. So you got to again, you got to think about like what is your what's your end goal of doing this? Is you are you doing YouTube to maybe you know? And you, all the people that are really the most successful on YouTube, they're not doing it for the money. They start by doing it for fun. They're doing it because this is what they love to do. They enjoy doing it. And the money comes, the money will come, right? Uh, let's see here. You're welcome, Red. Uh, Jason, okay, do I have, Jason Gray says, do I have to make better content? for someone to find me? Great question. And we talked about it a little bit ago. So um, obviously you wanna make the best content you can, right? You wanna have the best content you can. Um, however, the way people are first gonna find you, right? Without even seeing your video is by searching, right? So, but then the important thing happens is once they click your thumbnail, right? And it's a whole another thing. I, I mean, that could be for another live. Maybe we'll talk all about thumbnails. But you gotta make sure people click on your thumbnail, right? So you have a catchy thumbnail that people like it, right? Is your is your is your is your um, description catchy, right? Um, and you don't want to clickbait. Clickbait's meaning getting people to click, thinking it's one thing, but you offer another. You never want to do that. But you do want to be a little clicky, like make them interested, right? Like my last video I did, how to get one thousand subscribers fast, right? I wasn't lying and I wanted people to see like, oh my God, I want to learn because everybody wants to get a thousand subscribers and they want to do it fast. And I shared with them the fastest way I know possible. Um, and that is right. Keyword research. And, and that's how people are going to find you, Jason. What is your niche, Jason? What's your channel about or what are you thinking about? Let me know, Jason, and maybe I can help you out. Um, anybody else? Questions? I know we got 13 people on here. So, Jason, so you're doing the rain? Yeah. I mean, so you just, you know, you, you got to use vidIQ. Uh, also, with, with the meditation and the rain and all that stuff, and I know that's been a real, that was a popular video that I had, obviously. Um, and, and, when it comes to that, and I and I I answer comments every day, and people are co constantly, it's not working, or this isn't working, or that's not working, or, and I'm like, I, you know, you gotta, you know, you gotta take the ball and run with it, and you gotta be, you gotta set your, separate yourself, right? How can you be different in the rain and niche? You know, you can't just pop up a video and throw in the audio and just expect people to find you, right? Maybe there's a certain, maybe you can offer a certain niche to it, or maybe it's, you know, relaxing music for seniors, or maybe it's relaxing music for children, or I don't know. There's so many different ways to do it. But um, again, don't rely on AdSense as your number one profit if you're looking to make money. Uh, Angel, what programs do you use to make your logo? I, you know, I just use, uh, um, Either I pay for it on Fiverr, five bucks, 10 bucks, or I just do it myself on Canva, C-A-N-V-A, which is free, or PicMonkey, P-I-C-M-O-N-K-E. I'll put links below for you guys when this is, when it's over, um, or I'll put it up here. But my favorite one is this one here. Um, so this is my favorite one, PicMonkey. And I, there's a free version and there's a paid version. Paid version is like 10 bucks a month, 10, 12 bucks a month. 
And I do the paid version because I do all of my thumbnails on there. Okay. And, and they have like pre thumbnail templates that you can use. So uh, that's why I like it. And I can do things like remove the background from images. I can also do, um, I can do like my banners, all that kind of stuff. So even if you spent 10 bucks for a month and did the stuff you need to do and stop it or, you know, but Canva, PicMonkey are both free. Yeah, Jason, and download download VidIQ. Let me put it up here. Uh, it's free, but I'd go do that, and then that's how you're gonna and just start watching. Um, uh, Jason, go to VidIQ, download it for free. You do need to have Google Chrome. You have to have the extension, I believe. But go to VidIQ's channel on YouTube and start watching their videos. That, I do that even to this day. I constantly am watching their videos, trainings, and they'll teach you how to do keyword research. They'll teach you how to get views. Right. I'm not a master at it. I just I learn just like you're going to learn. I learn from watching their videos. So check out vidIQ. Um, OK, Nelson, what's up, man? Nelson Eduardo. Love that name. Caballero. Wasn't Caballero a skateboarder, too? All right. Thank you, Judd, for this valuable info. You're more than welcome. I love doing it. Um, what is the best free program software we can download to make and edit videos for PC? Yeah, um, I'm not a la I'm not a Windows person. I'm a Mac, so Mac iMovie and Windows. I believe Windows Movie Maker. Um, but Nelson, the the there are a lot of more free video software that are coming more available now online. So I might just do a simple Google search and you know free video software and see what's out there because there's some cloud based stuff that you can use now. Um, I'm sure they'll try and get you to upgrade late later or something. Who knows? But um, for Mac, iMovie is all you need, really. You know, you don't have to make it that hard. Um, yeah, Jason, vidIQ. So if you guys are looking to, to get more views, to get subscribers, or if you're looking for ideas, right? What are, because you might be thinking, well, what the heck am I going to make a video about? I don't, you know, do vidIQ here. You see on Jason's post, vidIQ keyword research. That is where I'd get started. Before you even hit record, guys, Get vidIQ, it's free. Watch vidIQ's videos on YouTube. Learn how to do keyword research. Learn how to write descriptions. Learn how to add tags. All the stuff that you need behind the scenes. And then you can just start putting these all into a spreadsheet. So you already know that they're proven to work. You know people are, now that doesn't guarantee you're going to get all the views, but you know that it's proven, you know it's working. Now you add your spin to it. You add your flavor, right? And start just start making content. Guys, you could make 100 videos and not get one view, right? However, your video number 101 could get a million views, okay? Um, you know, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail, right? Uh, Medisage or Medisage, I want to make variety content, but I have heard you should make separate channels for that. Well, variety at the beginning, stunt growth. What do you mean by variety content exactly? Do you mean like... Each video is going to be something completely different. Tell me what you mean by that. Do you mean like variety, like variety show? I want to make sure I understand. And I'll come back to you, okay, Mehdi? I won't forget you, but tell me exactly what you mean by variety. Red, complications videos? What's that? Do you mean like doing the like top 10, those sort of things? My best advice is, I don't know if you heard me earlier, maybe you came in later, but when I first got started, this is exactly what I did. And I can't remember who I learned this from, but I, I, I want to credit the person. But um, they're like, you know, you make it, you're making it too, too hard. Okay. So think about it. What's your niche? So let's say your niche is tech reviews. Okay. What are the top 10 tech review channels out there? Okay. Go to each of their channels, go to the filters tab, search videos by most popular. Now, this isn't, I'm not saying this is the best way, but this is a way to get started. Search the videos by most popular. So you take the videos that are getting millions all the way down. Take 10 from each channel, right? So you got 10, 20, 30, 40, right? You got 100 videos. So you got 10 channels, 10 videos per channel. There's your content to get started with. Now, it doesn't mean you have to do every one, but you can look and see for, okay, 
from this channel, I could see myself making three of these videos. From this one, maybe only one. From this one, I can see myself making four, okay? Because there's gonna be lots of videos you're like, eh, I don't, maybe I don't know as much about that topic, but you pick the topics you do know, guarantee you're gonna find something, and then you make the same video. You make it your own way. You don't copy, you don't cheat, you don't steal, but you add your flavor, add your spin to it, and you're rocking and rolling, okay? And you use a tool like vidIQ, you see what tags they're using, right? Use the tags that, that are fair to use, take out their tags. You don't want to use their name, things like that. Um, Nelson, you're welcome, my friend. Hope that was helpful. Terry, oh, thanks, man. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Um, so Med was asking before about doing variety views. Like instead of covering one game, I would cover that game, another game, sports, movie. Oh, I see. So you want to do like sports, movies, anything you're enthused about. I mean, you movies and sports are kind of two different things. You know what I mean? Like people aren't just going to, this is no, dis, no disrespect towards you or anything like that, but people just aren't going to watch your channel because you have such a great, you know, you love movies, you love sports, you love this right now. You could do that if you're like doing a vlogging style, right? Where like you are a personality type thing and maybe you're talking about this, but if you're going to be like do a sports review on Tuesday, a movie review on Wednesday and a cooking recipe on Thursday, you're two all over the board. My recommendation is pick one and, and focus on it. Now you could do, you could have a broader niche where like entertainment reviews or something, right? Maybe you're doing top tens, top 10 movies, top 10 sports, uh, you know, top 10 fails of all times, top 10 this and that, and that might fall into allowing you to do sports, this and this. Does that make sense? And there's a lot of people doing that out there and doing very well. Check that out. Uh, Pulse, what's up? Hello, how are you doing? I'm doing great, friend. Thank you. Uh, our question is, is what is your advice on music channels to grow their page? Do you mean, what do you mean by music channels to grow your page? You mean like the music you add? In your videos, tell me what you mean by that and I'll come back to you. So our question is, what is your advice on music channels to grow their page? I'm not sure I understand that, sorry. Sorry, wrong spot, that's all right, man. Uh, most channels I follow cover one thing at a time. If they play, pack their cover that one game. I'm still a little confused. Hopefully that helped, Mehdi. Um, but yeah, I mean, you just don't want to be too all over, right? And also your channel over time, this is a great thing too to think about is like my channel's evolving over time. Like I'm seeing that more people are interested in YouTube, right? Which is what we're talking about right now, right? They're interested in, which I would have never thought of talking about because I'm like, well, I just make movies and I do YouTube and I've been doing it for a couple of years. And, and, but over that time, I've learned a crap ton, right? I've learned about editing. I've learned about like, if you see, right, you can see back here, like my studio setup, right? And, you know, all this stuff, like I didn't know how to do this. I just learned, I've added over time. You look at my old videos, I'm in my kitchen, then I'm in my family room. I mean, I just, you just do it. You just get started and you learn along the way. And then the more you learn, the you'll see your content getting better, your views, your subscribers, right? YouTube is a long-term game, but the great thing about YouTube is all the videos that I make and I put online, they're there forever. They are there forever. So videos, I have videos that still bring in money as an affiliate, right? That I made four years ago, four years ago. And you don't need a million views, right? If you do it the right way, if you want to add the affiliate marketing element, which is what I recommend. How much music should a channel come out with a month or how to get subscribers to engage? So I'm still a little confused, Paul. Do you mean like your channel, like you're, you, are you making this music yourself? Like are you an artist? I think that's where I'm a little confused, Paul. Let me know what you mean by that. Um, is Paul Subsidian your channel? Maybe I'll go see your, check out your channel here. One sec. And what do you mean by music? Like is, is music your content? Is that what you're putting out? I mean, if that's it, I mean, 
you know, you got really when it comes to putting out content, right? When I first started, I was putting out content every single day because I just wanted to get as much out there. You're welcome, Jason. But the problem was, is my, it was crap, right? I was putting out crap. I wasn't happy with it. I didn't feel good about it. Like I even deleted some videos that were getting lots of views because I just felt horrible. Okay. Okay. Um, so is it, is it called pulse? Is it the name that you have on here? Okay, cool. Yeah. I'm checking it out right now. And is it original music pulse? Or like meditation? Is it meditation? I'm looking at the... I mean, yeah, I love it. Really cool stuff, actually. You're getting some views. You're getting 300, 300, 400. Um, you're at 108 subscribers. That's awesome. I don't know how long your channel's been around, but I mean, again, it goes back to what can you handle? Um, what does your schedule allow? Does your schedule allow one a week? Then do one a week. Does your schedule allow three a week? Then I do three. If your schedule allows five, then do five, right? If you feel that you can put out good quality, right? Don't just put it out to put it out. Um, and it'll grow. It takes time. Make sure you're, you're, you know, again, vidIQ, keyword research, see what other channels are doing, copy it, but add your own flavor to it, of course, and you'll get there. Yeah. There's no magic number, right? I know people that put out one video a month and they have millions and millions of subscribers. People doing the same niche are putting out videos every day and they have a hundred subscribers. So you could do one video a month and who knows, that could be a million subscribers right there. Or you or not, or you could be doing one every day and nobody subscribes. Uh, cool, I hope that helped. <laughs> um, useful wisdom, can you monetize AI voiceover? Um, that's a big thing right now, great question. So there's lots of software and I, and I see stuff all the time and I get emails all the time. Um, I've tried those before, I personally don't like them. Um, when I see a video and I hear AI, I shut it off right away. Because I know it's not authentic. I know it's not real. Now, that's not no offense to, to anybody doing that. There's And that's the thing is there's channels out there with millions of views, billions of views, and it's all AI. But I don't have the patience for it. And to be honest with you, like I've tried to do some whiteboard stuff with the AI in the background. And yeah, as far as I know, you can monetize it because it's your original script as long as you're putting your original script into the AI. Um, I don't know too much about that, but as far as I know, there's tons of people doing it, doing whiteboards and top 10 lists, and they're just, they're doing their own editing and then they add the voiceover. So yeah, I don't see why not. Um, just make sure you're, it's good, right? People are interested and want it. Um, I've just found it to take a long time. By the time I uploaded my content and then I did the voiceover and then I did the editing, it's actually quicker for me to just get out in front of the camera. But if you really don't want to be on camera, that's totally fine. You can absolutely do it, right? I just think it's a little time consuming, but it doesn't mean that's bad. Yeah, Angel. So when it comes to affiliate marketing programs, like I don't, Amazon, I, I use Amazon just because it's easy. People get started quickly and that sort of thing. But I always, when it comes to products, I say go right to the source. So it all depends on what you're promoting, right? It could be anything. It could be iPhones. I'm looking around my room. It could be candles. I got a candle over here. Like, um, so like take, for instance, like this candle, um, this candle is, I don't know, it's called Hunting Home or something, Hunt, Huntington Home. My wife gets them at like TJ Maxx. But I would, rather than go to Amazon, I would go to hunting, first thing I would do is go to huntingtonhome.com and I'd scroll to the very bottom of the page and I'd look for a tab for affiliates or a tab for partners or something along those lines. And you could simply just type in Huntington Home Affiliate Program or Candles Affiliate Programs, um, you know, golfing affiliate programs, fishing affiliate programs, cooking affiliate programs. And that way you're going to go, if you go directly to the source and they have their own affiliate program, you're going to get a higher percentage. So, you know, um, Amazon, Amazon is like 3%, 7% where when you go directly to the source, you could be getting 30, 40, 50. I have a affiliate program. I, 
I promote that I get 100%. So I get 100 bucks, 100%, I get the full $100. And the reason they pay me 100% is because it's a lead for them. And they know that that lead is going to turn into a lot more than $100. So the affiliates, myself and thousands of others that promote, that's 100 bucks, right? So I'd go to the source. But you can also go to places like ClickBank, JVZoo. There's tons. Just search affiliate marketplaces, and, and there's tons of stuff out there. You just want to make sure that you're you're aligning yourself with a quality product that you would use yourself, that you would recommend. And 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 I only promote stuff I use myself. I don't just promote like I use FitIQ, so I recommend FitIQ. I use a software tool called ClickFunnels to make my websites. I recommend ClickFunnels. I use Active Campaign for my email provider. I recommend Active Campaign, and so on. Okay, because I want to build that know, like, and trust. I want people to trust me. I don't want to just say, oh, this product's great, and I've never used it. Uh, okay, cool, Pulse. Yeah, I think that's awesome. You know, look at the top 10 channels out there. What are they doing? How can you add? There's a thing called, I think it's called like cross branding or cross niche. And if you go to, there's a great website called Think Media. Sean Cannell, Sean Cannell is his name. Great. He's, he's amazing. His content's awesome. And he's really big on YouTubers, helping YouTubers. And he talks about something called like kind of cross branding, cross niching. So for example, would be um, like, okay, cooking is a very crowded niche. Well, I'm not just going to start a cooking channel, but could I take something from another knee, from another YouTuber and mix it with mine, right? So maybe I add humor or maybe I add, you know, something different, something unique, something weird, right? So I take something from one YouTuber and another and I combine them, right? So a great example is these guys, they do, it's called Epic Mealtime, Epic Food. And what they do is they take regular recipes like mac and cheese, but then they make it massive, like, 100 pound mac and cheese recipe. And that's their twist. So now they're getting tons of views. They're just making mac and cheese, but their whole thing is I'm going to 10x it. So how could you add that to your flair? Think about it. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in. Matthew, 4,000 hours. Is that watch time by viewers? Like I had a video that has 10 hours and it was watched 400 times all the way through. I'm good and 1,000 subs. Yeah, I mean, you know, so Matthew, you always, you know, go to your YouTube studio and just check your views and your watch time and it'll say in there 1,000, 4,000 hours and then go to the monetize tab and it'll tell you if you're able to monetize. Yeah, I always look, I mean, I look at my stats every single day, two, three times a day. All right, useful wisdom. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in. I uh, actually got, guys, about two more minutes here, and I got a boogie. Oh, thanks, Pulse. Appreciate it. Uh, Angel, thank you. I'm glad that helped. Yeah, Pulse, great chatting with you guys. I'm going to try and do these again. Um, this was kind of a test, test run for me because um, I've – still kind of learning the stream and the live and stuff, but I do want to start doing these on a regular basis um, because I want to, I love doing these. I love helping out. My favorite thing to do is, is answer questions. I could do this all day. Um, so I'm keep an eye out guys. I will do these again. I promise. Um, so think of your questions, right? If things come up, you know, maybe if we get more people, we'll start to do this as a regular thing. And, and cause I would love to help you guys get started on YouTube Love to help you grow your channels, answer anything and everything I can. Um, I'm always completely 110% transparent. I will always be honest, tell you, you know, if I think it's not right, I might say, hey, or if I, you know, I'll, I'll let you guys know because I, I want to help you. So I appreciate it. All right, guys, I'm going to hang up. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Paul. Paul says, you did awesome. Appreciate your time. Yeah, I know. I feel like a little kid, right? Like, oh, I hope they like it. Um, so yeah, guys, I'll work on my... Uh, my live streaming here. And, and I think I talked for like 10 minutes before you, before I realized I wasn't on freaking embarrassing, but, um, more so because I was hoping to like use that video. I had some good things I want to talk about. That's all right. I'll make a new video and we'll get it out. You guys have a great weekend. I appreciate it. And we'll talk soon. Bye.